you know, a lot of them just kind of look at it as a linear thing, like, oh, I'm going to grow my followers and then I'm going to secure brand deals instead of I'm going to grow my followers and build relationships with brands so that I am monetizing as I am figuring out, you know, what is the sweet spot for me to build momentum, grow follow followers, things like that. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode. So this week's episode is going to be very exciting because I get to talk about one of my superpowers. And if you have been following me on Instagram, TikTok, threads, this is my bread and butter. And that is helping creators earn more money per brand deal, especially small creators, micro influencers, anyone that has under 100,000 followers. Because contrary to what you may think, followers, views, virality, engagement are not the only pieces of the pie that can get you to secure more per brand deal. And that is really what I love empowering creators to learn. That is what I love teaching and training creators to really understand and master because there's a lot of money on the table that a lot of creators are leaving behind by not knowing what else you can leverage outside of followers, views, engagement. So we're gonna talk about that today because I love it when I get to help micro influencers, even UGC creators who don't really have a social currency to be able to secure 10K months, 20K months, 30K months, even 40K months from brand deals because it's 100% possible. And if anything, brands nowadays are likely to lean more towards working with these smaller creators because of the fact that one, obviously they're a lot more cost effective. And number two, they're really able to hone in on building a stronger, tight knit community. Whereas someone who has, you know, let's say a million followers. And for me, I'm helping normalize that because micro influencers have so much power. And even if you're not a micro influencer, you're not a UGC creator, and you have more than 100,000 followers, learning to harness this type of power and learning how micro influencers think how UGC creators think, and how they're able to leverage literally every part of who they are aside from followers and views. This can be your ticket to really being able to scale every single brand deal that you secure. So every single time a creator and influencer reaches out to me in the DMs because they need my help and they want to, you know, inquire about my services, whether that's coaching or management, I always try to evaluate where they are and what it is that really is holding them back. And for the most part, a lot of content creators and influencers have a lot of common fears. And a lot of these fears really hold them back from being able to scale and being able to actually secure these high paying brand deals. And it's keeping them stuck where they're at and not really moving forward. And, and for a lot of them, because they don't choose to move through the fear and really learn how to overcome those fears, these creators either just quit being an influencer, quit being a creator, or they're just stuck securing a three-figure brand deals, affiliate offers, or low four-figure brand deals. So Naomi, what are the most common fears that creators and influencers face when it comes to brand deals? There's quite a few of them, but they all kind of like intertwine with each other. To me, the first thing that really comes up is they fear rejection and they fear, you know, asking for more money because they don't want rejection. And truly, this is just human nature because, you know, our bodies, our minds are wired to help us feel safe. And so when we are, you know, making decisions and things like that, we are always inclined to make a decision that is the most safe, right? And a lot of us are really afraid of taking risks because, you know, we don't know what's on the other side. And so if it's the unknown, it kind of registers as like, it's unsafe. You know, a lot of creators really don't want to hear that rejection. And I don't know if that roots to anything from our childhood or whatever, but it is human nature to not want rejection. And so they're afraid to ask for more money. And so a lot of these creators, when they are, let's say, offered, oh, you know, I'll offer you a thousand dollars for a reel and a story set instead of like 
asking the brand, hey, do you have more budget to negotiate? They're just going to take the first offer because they're like, well, I'd rather take that than have nothing. Or I'd rather take that than go back and forth with a brand, negotiate with them, and they say no to, let's say, $5,000. I'd much rather have a little bit than have nothing. And in that same vein, creators really don't want to lose a brand deal. And so I think they have this notion or this idea that if I negotiate or if I make this difficult for a brand to close the deal with me, that I'm going to end up losing it. And I get that. I remember when I first started negotiating as a micro influencer, it was giving me a lot of anxiety doing the negotiations back and forth because I haven't closed it yet. And so I'm just like, okay, I don't know if I'm going to get this brand deal. And so it's giving me anxiety. I would much rather get it over with. Like, let's just get it over with. Let's just say yes and close the deal and, you know, put a stamp on it, sign the contract and move on. But a lot of creators don't understand that, you know, usually the first offer is their lowest offer. And I don't know if you guys know this, but brands usually prepare for, okay, this is the max that we are going to offer this particular creator, but we're going to try and offer them a lower number first. And if they say yes, then great, we save money. But if they push back and they say, hey, I'd love if you can offer me more money for this, then they have a separate number prepared to make sure that, you know, they cover that cost because obviously they don't want to go over budget and they obviously want to make sure that they have enough to pay every single creator that they're going to hire. And so with that, they usually start with something small and then work their way up. But if you're a creator who is always going to say yes to the very first offer, you are leaving that kind of money on the table and that money potential. Another thing too, that creators really are very uncomfortable of using when it comes to brand deals is the word no. And a lot of creators, obviously this roots back to everything that I just said. They're afraid of rejection. They're afraid of losing the brand deal. They're afraid of asking for more money. And so the word no is kind of icky in a sense where like, I would much rather get a little bit of money than getting no money. And because in entrepreneurship, there's really no guarantee of where your money is gonna come from. Or, you know, every single month is going to be different. Using the word no is kind of like I am denying myself of this opportunity to make this kind of money because I don't know where the rest of my income is going to come from if I continue to say no. But here's the thing that creators don't understand is that when you don't have boundaries, brands will continuously try to take advantage of you and the creator's in the future that they're going to partner with. So here's a perfect example. You have, you know, tried out different rates for yourself. And I actually know this because I know a few creators who do this and it, uh, it just pisses me off a little bit because it definitely ruins the playing field and it ruins influencer marketing for every creator. So let's say $1,000 is the sweet spot to charge a brand for a reel. They've figured out, hey, every single time I tell a brand it's $1,000 for a reel, they say yes. And so this is my sweet spot. I'm going to tell brands it's $1,000 every single time because I get an easy yes out of it. But here's the thing. As you grow your following, as you develop more relationships with your community, you increase your engagement, you increase your conversion, you have developed all these skill sets that are very lucrative to a brand. Over time, if you continue to stick to $1,000, it really ruins influencer marketing for everyone because the brand's going to be like, okay, well, I'm going to go with this creator and this creator because they say yes to a thousand dollars every single time. So why would I partner with someone that charges $5,000 and they have half their following? Like that just leaves a bad taste in other creators' mouths because they just don't know who they're competing against. And so now brands are going to lower that bar to offer a thousand dollars to every creator. And they're going to be like, well, someone's going to say yes. And here's the thing, even though they're more than capable, they know for a fact that they can pay a creator more money. They would much rather save that money 
and use it for something else. Another thing too that creators are really afraid of when it comes to brand deals and it kind of relates to the asking for more money is that they're afraid that brands wouldn't want to work with them again because they're too expensive. That is definitely a mindset thing that creators really need to overcome just because you get rejection after rejection after rejection, or the timing isn't right for, for the brand to be able to offer you, you know, a ton of money. You're ingraining it in your head that your content and your value and your community and your endorsement is not as valuable as you think it is. Because brands know 100% why they're choosing to hire a creator like you. But do you know that? Brands are really betting on you not knowing what your value is. And it's like a mind game, right? Lastly, another fear that creators have when it comes to brand deals is, is not having stability or the fear of the unknown. And with entrepreneurship, everything that we do is obviously unknown. We're stepping into thin air. And my mom even puts it in this way. And she's like, you know, I just love your faith when it comes to to your business and entrepreneurship because you're literally just like walking on water and you're having faith that it's all going to work out. You have faith that money is going to come to you, that you are going to attract what is for you. And that's really what it is. And a lot of creators like are afraid that, you know, I don't know when the next brand deal will come. And so I want to hold on to the brand deals that are, are coming to me. So like, for example, even if it's like an affiliate offer, or even if it's like a hundred dollars, $200, $300, they're like, well, that's better than nothing. So I'm going to accept it because I don't know when these brands are going to start offering me five figures or wh when these brands are going to be offering me four figures. So they just hold on to all the crappy deals. And that's very much the scarcity mindset. And I know a lot of you guys, especially the ones that, you know, have been following me for a while. And if you're listening to this, obviously your desire is to be able to secure, is to be able to secure high ticket brand deals. Maybe your goal is to hit a six figure income in brand deals. Maybe it is to become a full-time content creator. Maybe it is to just build a strong second income stream on top of your nine to five, whatever that goal is, you just want you know, to be able to monetize your social media platform, your following, your skill set in content creation, and be able to make it lucrative. However, like when it comes to creators, especially like, I feel like larger creators versus micro influencers, I feel like a lot of micro influencers, and I'm saying this because I've seen this happen with all the creators that I've worked with, and being a micro influencer myself, when I used to do more lifestyle content, is that a lot of micro influencers get the business from the very beginning. And that is why they see success really early on in their career. And then when their following takes off, like let's say they hit 100,000, 200,000, things like that. When they hit those follower milestones, those engagement milestones, they're able to really scale it to a point where they're able to secure consistent six-figure income, multiple six-figure incomes, they're able to really expand their income streams and things like that. And that's just because they understand that they needed to learn the business from the very beginning when they have zero. So when it comes to um, the business side of being a content creator and influencer, here are some of the things that most creators make mistakes on. So the first one is waiting for the perfect conditions. A lot of creators, and I know I did this for myself as well, where I was like, when I hit X amount of followers, that's when I'll start looking at brand deals. That's when I'll start to learn how to monetize. And honestly, if your goal as a content creator and influencer is to turn it into some sort of career, you're turning into something that can be lucrative and you want to monetize later on, the earlier that you start to hone in on what are the skills that I need in order to be able to monetize? How can I be business savvy? What are the things, what are the skill sets that I need to learn in order to work with brands, build, build relationships with brands, secure brand deals, collaborations, things like that, the earlier 
the better. And this is because a lot of content creators, when they hit a specific milestone, like let's say they go from zero to a million followers, there's a lot of things that needs to be reworked within that content strategy that they don't understand. There's a lot within that content strategy that got them to a million followers that doesn't quite attract brands in general like brands don't work with you because you have a million followers brands don't work with you because you have highly engaging content they work with you because they see your relationship with your audience they see that you are marketable so when a creator goes from zero to a million followers and, and they don't incorporate that along the way as they grow those followers from the very beginning, it's hard to really start to integrate branded content. It feels off and your audience is going to kind of tell that they're like, oh, this creator is trying to monetize. And that is why they're trying to integrate all of these products now when they didn't used to do it. And I get it. A lot of creators start this journey off as a hobby. This is like a creative outlet. This is something as some sort of escape from whatever it is that you're trying to escape from. We don't anticipate really the power of how much you can really succeed in this industry, how much money you are so you you could potentially make. And that's why, you know, in the beginning, you really treat it as a hobby and not really a business. As far as mistakes go, a lot of creators take such a long time before they make a decision that I'm gonna take this seriously. I'm gonna treat this as a career. I'm gonna treat this as I am clocking into a job. Another mistake that creators tend to make is, is that creators spend a lot of their time on growth and getting more followers and going viral versus a holistic business growth. And so, you know, in the beginning, obviously like as an entrepreneur if you're a solopreneur you wear a lot of the hats but it's necessary for you to wear all the hats because you're not a business unless you're making money and you know the way for you to make money is obviously the easiest way to do that is through brand deals and that means you have to start not only just building relationships with your followers but building relationships with brands and you know, a lot of them just kind of look at it as a linear thing, like, oh, I'm going to grow my followers and then I'm going to secure brand deals instead of I'm going to grow my followers and build relationships with brands so that I am monetizing as I am figuring out, you know, what is the sweet spot for me to build momentum, grow follow followers, things like that. Another thing too that creators like to do is obviously, and I've talked about this, is that they say yes right away. And so with that example that I talked about earlier with $1,000, that also leads to burnout. So for example, your goal in the beginning was like, okay, I'm going to, you know, make $5,000 a month. And I know for a fact that brands want to say yes to um, $1,000. So I'm just going to quote them $1,000 and they're going to say yes every single time. But like over time, as you grow, like let's say you were juggling a nine to five and content creation then where you're like, okay, 5,000 easy. And then you, let's say, decide to leave your nine to five and you're like, okay, now I need to make sure that I'm able to sustain myself income wise. And so let's try to shoot for $10,000 a month. And so now $10,000 months, if you're still charging $1,000, that's 10 brand deals a month. And so 10 brand deals every single month can be doable. So that's probably like two to three brand deals a week. But um, that can also be very stressful because let's say, you know, things conflict and you want like, you know, um, you want to take a vacation or something like that. It's not sustainable. So it's if you think about it, would you much rather create 10 pieces of content or work for 10 brands at a thousand or produce one for 10,000? That's kind of how I always present it to creators that I work with is that you can 100% accept this for a thousand dollars. But if we get one that's $10,000, that frees up your entire month to, you know, continue to grow your following, nurture your audience and do other things on top of that brand deal. Here's another example too. So like I remember in my broadcast channel, I um, posted this 
question of like, how much do you charge brands? Because I just wanted to see what people are charging as far as rates. And there was this content creator. She has like double the following of one of my management clients. And she says that she still charge. I think she has like over 200,000 followers and she still charges a thousand bucks for a, par- a partnership. And she tells me, she's like, well, I make 20K months. And so I was just like, oh, okay, so you charge a thousand bucks. You make 20K months, that's 20 brand deals every single month. That's literally like every single day of the week or the weekday. So like five times a week, she has a brand deal up. And I was asking her, and I asked her this question. I was like, you know, yeah, sure. You know, that is great. Congratulations, you're hitting 20K months. And I'm glad that you're able to secure all these clients and brands and things like that. But a year from now, or even five years from now, are you still going to be okay with that? Because, you know, once you get to that caliber of like, I am making 20k months, 30k months, it's hard for you to downgrade your lifestyle or like downgrade how much money you're earning, you're just gonna you're not okay with going from 20k to 5k. And so I asked her the question, you know, a year from now, or maybe in five years from now, are you going to be okay filming 20 videos every single month for brand deals because you cap yourself at a thousand dollars? And she was like, yeah, you know, I am probably going to burn out, but I'm okay for now. Definitely planted that into her head. So hopefully, you know, she made a decision to increase her rates and, um, learn how to, you know, make more by working less and things like that. So another mistake that I see creators make when it comes to brand deals is that they wait. They wait for brands to come to them. They don't actively seek out or network or outreach to brands that they want to work with. They wait for opportunities to come to them instead of building those relationships so that those opportunities come to them eventually. They also wait for a manager to come swoop them up when, you know, that usually is not gonna work. A lot of these creators feel like, oh, I'm gonna be the exception. I'm gonna be the one that's gonna be the one hit wonder of like, I'm gonna invent a trend. I'm gonna invent demure and an agency is going to come swoop me up and say, we we wanna represent you because we know these opportunities are gonna come in and you need support in doing that. Like they, like a lot of creators think that that's normal when that is usually the exception, like a lot of us are the rule. And so for me, at least for me, like this is how I think I can be the exception and I can be the one that stands out. I can be unique from every single creator that's out there, every single expert that's out there. But I, the the way that I operate my business, the way that I think about business ownership, entrepreneurship is that I work my business as if I was the rule. And if those opportunities come, great. But at least I know how things work. I think that is the mindset that a lot of creators need to have is that they need to work their business as if they were the rule. And then once that one in a million opportunity happens, when things kind of line up, then you are more than equipped to be able to scale that business. So let's dive into the mindset of successful micro influencers, successful UGC creators. How are they able to succeed so much quicker than macro influencers or like mega influencers? How are they able to create 10K months, 20K months, 30K months, 40K months as a small creator? Like what is it that they're doing? Like what makes them different from you know, someone who has a million followers. I want you guys to really um, evaluate the mindset of a small creator. So when small creators dive into the industry and they want to work with brands, even when they have a small following. And I think for me, the smallest creator that I've been able to help secure a four-figure deal is a thousand followers. And, you know, that wasn't even a UGC project. That was, uh, you know, social media promotion is that a lot of them from the get go, they are eager and they are hungry to understand the business side of things. And this is because 
you know, they understand that they don't have the followers, they don't have the views to fall back on. And so they have to almost work harder in order to secure about the same amount of brand deals or the same amount of money as someone who has a hundred thousand followers. And so for them, it's, so it's kind of like, you know, a grading system, right? So when it comes to pricing and brand deals and things like that, someone with a million followers can charge 10 K let's say for a, a piece of content. And so for a micro influencer, in order for them to, you know, hit a 10 K contract, not just a video, like that has no usage, has no exclusivity. They have to understand, okay, like what do I do so that I can secure a 10K deal? That may that may appear as a three-month partnership to where they create content every single month for three months. That could also mean one piece of content, but they're giving usage and exclusivity to a brand, all other things. So they kind of are a little bit more creative when it comes to how can I get myself to be hitting a 10K brand deal or a 10K month as efficiently and without burning myself out. With that mindset, you have to be creative. And a lot of these micro influencers, they're all about efficiency. They're all about how can I make sure I maximize every single brand deal and maximize every offer so that I am able to exponentially get from, let's say, charging a thousand dollars for a piece of content to now getting it to 10,000. Like what is the solution for me that also works for the brand to secure more money? And piggybacking off of that, they look at every area that they can leverage. How can I charge more money? It could be usage. Someone with a million followers can charge 10K for a TikTok, let's say, that doesn't have any kind of usage, any kind of exclusivity. For someone who's a micro-influencer, that let's say $2,000 can scale up to $10,000 depending on the usage where the brand is using the content outside of their platform, let's say for ads or their socials, email marketing, website marketing, or they're exclusive where they're not allowed to work with any other competitors for a certain amount of time. What is the demand? Like, like how do, how do we price exclusivity based on the demand? It could also mean the holidays to where brands really want to be able to secure as much marketing as possible. And they want things done immediately. They want things done expedited. So, you know, how can I, you know, charge more money based on the timeline? Like if it's a quick turnaround, things like that. Micro influencers have a different work ethic when it comes to brand partnerships and the business side of things, because they know that I actually have to be business savvy. I need to know how to advocate for myself. I need to know how to communicate with these brands properly so that they don't take advantage of me because I don't have millions of followers. I don't have millions of views to fall back on. And so for them, they're like, I need to make sure that I know exactly if this brand is offering me something legitimate or if this is scammy or if they're lowballing me, taking advantage of me, or if this is actually legit that I can follow through with. And I need to understand how to respond to these brands so that I don't lose the deal, so that they respect me, so that they understand the value of my work. Usually when it comes to brands, they're going to use that gaslighting tactic of, hey, um, we can't offer you that because you don't have enough followers or based on your views, this is how much we can give you. And so if you don't know how to handle those objections of brands not wanting to pay because you have quote unquote, not enough followers, not enough views, then you're already at a deficit. Micro influencers, small creators, UGC creators have to learn the business. And so for them, in order to handle these objections of like, you don't have enough followers, you don't have enough views, or it's just UGC content. Why are you charging that much for just content? Things like that. Like they need to learn how to justify charging a brand more money so they understand the the money trail so you know when you hear you know follow the money things like that you have to be able to understand okay this is why I charge this much it's because this is my expertise this is my skill set this is my authority this is amount of followers that I have this is the amount of time it takes to produce the content all those things they also 
figure out how do I stand out? Like what makes me different? Why would a brand want to work with me than someone who has maybe double my following? Why would a brand want to work with me than someone who has the same amount of followers or the same niche creates the same exact content as me? Like what makes me stand out? Why work with me when the social currency in today's age is followers and views and I don't have that that I can compare to someone with 100,000 followers. And so when it comes down to the rates, when they increase the rates, there is intention. They know exactly why they raise those rates. They know where that money comes from, how that rate fluctuates. And I've worked with a few micro influencers where it was kind of uncomfortable in the beginning to increase those rates, but I was able to help them justify, you know, why they deserve more money. For example, I have a micro influencer in my roster right now. And before she worked with me, she was securing six figures, right? She was securing 8K months to 10K months. And when she reached out to me, her rates were freaking low. Like she was securing, I think, between a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars per brand deal. And so she was working a lot, doing maybe like eight brand deals every single month. And that was because she was pretty high in demand. Like she had that authority in that specific brand category and that specific niche. And so she was attracting a lot of brands, but also in that same wavelength, because she was establishing herself as the authority for that specific brand category, also in the specific location, it's very niched that her content was constantly going viral. Her content was constantly converting. And so her rates weren't really reflecting that. Obviously, like raising her rates when we started working together was a little uncomfortable because she was afraid that, again, the fear of like, what if the brand says, no, I'm never going to get hired again, that, you know, the brand deal opportunities are going to go down. It was actually contrary because now we are able to communicate with the brands that, hey, like we've raised her rates because this is her average from a sponsored post. And this is the kind of results that we've been able to generate for past partners and brands, you know, resonate with that because they're like, okay, yeah, this totally makes sense. Let's give her the the money that you're looking for. And there is another um, micro influencer that I work with in my accelerator program as well. She was hired to do UGC for a brand and she's worked with a brand a couple times before because, you know, she didn't really know exactly what to say to get a brand to reconsider renegotiating the offer. And this is because she didn't know what she could leverage. It was like night and day when we broke down and looked at, okay, what is it really that made this brand want to come back to you? And when she said, you know, the brand came back to me because my content on their page is the highest performing and the highest converting, and this is organic. And so I was like, okay, that totally makes sense that the brand wanted to come back to you. And so if you think about it, the brand actually needs her more than she needs them. And so we need to leverage that and tell them, hey, I know I've been able to let you get away with paying me $750, but because I know for a fact that all of my previous content has garnered over a million views organically on your page, I need to be paid more money. And with that, she was able to secure, I think, $13,000 for six pieces of content when the original offer that they had was like five grand for 10 pieces of content, which is like $500 per UGC. And we've been able to all basically triple that. Another thing too that a lot of these micro influencers start to do is they work on their confidence a lot. And so, you know, because they operate at a deficit where they have a smaller following, they're not as popular. They don't have as many views as someone who has a million followers, let's say, like they sometimes devalue themselves. They're like, okay, because I don't have enough followers, like I should be accepting 300 to 500. And so sometimes they believe what these brands are saying, like, well, you don't have enough followers, so we're just going to offer you $300 to, you know, $500 or something like that. You know, that's something that you have to make a decision on, like, Do you actually want to build that confidence and say, hey, like, I know what I'm capable of. I know what makes me stand out. I know why you reached out to me. Like, I know 
what I have to offer on the table. Something else too that micro-influencers learn when they're learning the business of influence, when they're learning um, the business side of being a content creator is that they learn to create boundaries. And so they're not going to say yes to every single brand deal that comes their way, but they're going to be like, okay, I am going to secure four brand deals a month. And with these four brand deals a month, I want to be able to make X amount of dollars every month. So let's say it's like 10K. So like $2,500 per brand deal minimum. And then when it gets to, you know, oh, I have four brand deals and it's just at 8K, it didn't really quite hit my goal for the month, then maybe I can be a little bit more flexible with the next brand deal and say, okay, I can take it for two grand just so that you can offset whatever. But they understand that they need to be saying more no's than they are saying yes because they value their time, they value their peace of mind, they value their mental health more than they value the dollar. And so, um, and that just helps you attract more and attract more quality when you're saying no. Also, brands respect the creator when they're saying no, because they're like, okay, it didn't work out this time. So next time we're going to keep in mind that their starting rate is at $2,500. And so we're going to make sure that when we come back to her, we have at least $2,500 to offer. Another thing that successful micro-influencers and successful UGC creators really know how to do is knowing how to be collaborative. And this also comes with, you know, the fact that they're still a small creator and they are still operating at a deficit. They don't have as many followers. They don't have as many views. And so they are a lot more keen on setting that ego aside to be like, okay, I have to be collaborative. I have to be professional. I have to be in their good graces. I have to be brand safe. And because of that, brands are keen to hire them over and over and over. And they're able to enjoy actually working with these micro-influencers and UGC creators because they're like, okay, like they were on time with their content. They um, didn't give me an attitude when it came down to the creative. They gave me the concept. They were on time. They were responsive. Um, The content didn't really need a lot of edits. They were grateful afterward. They sent me insights. They sent me a report. And, you know, when we were negotiating, it was collaborative. Another thing too, that these successful micro influencers really value is they value relationships. Like they value building community, building relationships with brands so that brands actually come back to them. So there was this micro influencer who was in my Spawn Master program and then she upgraded to the Brand Deal Accelerator and she's actually now a management client. Like she has built clientele for years to where they always come back to her. And because she's professional, she's on time, she's collaborative, she's responsive, she's very um, respectful, really like understands like the corporate culture, corporate respect, things like that. Brands are coming back to her every single time. And she's been able to keep the same clientele for like the last two years. And because they've built that trust with her over time, it wasn't hard to have that conversation of like, hey, can we increase these rates? Or um, because since we've last talked about my rates, I've increased them. So do you have any room to grow with the contract? And not only that, because she has repeat work with these clients, she's able to have some stability with her income. It's no longer like, oh, I don't know when the next brand deal is going to come because she knows that they're going to hire her every single time. Something else too that these micro-influencers understand is that they know how they can position themselves as the authority in their niche. They know how they stand out. They know why brands reach out to them. And when you have that kind of clarity to where I know exactly why you should hire me versus my competitor, 
because this is what I know, this is what they don't know. And doing that kind of market research of like, not just based off of content skills, views, followers, things like that, but also knowing, can you convert? Like, you know, I know why you're reaching out to me, but it's because like, I'm able to convert because I was able to do this for another brand, or I was able to do this organically. Even thinking outside the box, like you, do you have a strong email list? Do you have a strong broadcast channel to where like when you drop things in there, like links, affiliate links, things like that, people are likely going to shop and sell that out. And one more thing that you have to understand is that these successful micro influencers and UGC creators are solution based. They always look at how to solve the problem. And so they ask a lot of questions to the brand of like, what is your goal? What is your priority? Like, what do you guys look for with creators that you work with? And with that, they're able to provide solutions. So like, you know, obviously a brand who already has a scope of like, okay, we want you to create a TikTok, a reel, a set of stories, things like that. But like, let's say the budget doesn't line up or, um, the deliverables don't line up. Like, do you know how to create an alternate, like an alternate solution or maybe upsell them? So like, let's say a brand says, you know, we can't give you $5,000. We only have 1500 to spend. And you know that you are highly converting when it comes to your story content. So you can be like, hey, why don't we do a story partnership? Like I have this kind of conversion when I talk about things on my stories, we can even um, pin it as a highlight just so that people can come back to it and do that. So like, do you know how to do those things to where you're creating solutions and actually being the expert, stepping into the room as the expert, as the one giving them, hey, like, I think this will be good for your marketing. And the last thing that micro influencers are really great at doing, especially successful ones, successful UGC creators, is that they study the brands that they want to work with. They look at their marketing. They look at the creators that they work with. They study their patterns, their seasons, when they're likely to have sales, like what kind of content or what kind of marketing strategy do they do when they have these sales? Do they run ads? Do they have um, Amazon Prime? They Do they have Prime Day? Do they have Black Friday? And they also look at, okay, what is missing in their content strategy, in their marketing strategy that I can help fix? Like, how can I be the solution? And how can I bridge that gap? Now, with all these things that you've learned that micro influencers and UGC creators do successfully in order to secure 10K, 20K, 30K, 40K months, imagine if you're a bigger creator who is business savvy, who has the same mindset and knows how to leverage business strategies, who knows how to leverage business strategies, marketing and sales, just imagine how much more you can scale where you're at to go to where you want to go, whether that's a six-figure income or more. If a micro-influencer and a UGC creator can do this with the small following, the small tight-knit community that they have, how much more you when you have more followers? Let's say you have followers upwards of 100,000 followers or more. Just imagine how much you can scale that. And I know a lot of people, every time I talk about micro influencers making a ton of money, they always doubt me and they're like, well, they're probably the exception when I'm like, no, this is normal in my world. And I've learned how to normalize this for smaller creators and how to help them duplicate what I've been able to create for my clients, for myself, things like that, because I have um, multiple micro influencers making this kind of money. For example, my management client who was a micro influencer, she was charging $1,500 to $2,000 per brand deal. And we were able to secure her two five-figure brand deals within a span of like four months. And she made a hundred grand in four months. Another micro influencer who was in my Spawn Master program, who just upgraded to the brand deal accelerator, just secured back-to-back five-figure months. She's secured 
I think 7,500 for one piece of content. And that's the most that she's gotten paid for one piece of content. And she's also been able to secure her first five figure brand deal. A micro influencer also started with my spawn master program, upgraded to the brand deal accelerator program. And now I had just offered her management on her own prior to us working together under the agency she secured over $200,000 in 18 months unmanaged. And most of those partnerships are UGC contracts. So I hope that was helpful, you guys. And I know that a lot of these, you know, answers weren't really strategy or technique, but most of it is mindset. And for me, honestly, um, in order for strategies to work, you need to have the proper mindset in order for you to move the needle. And to me, business ownership is 80% mindset and 20% strategy. And a lot of, you know, strategies come and go and strategies change, but principles, frameworks, mindset, they last a lifetime. And whether or not, you know, you stay at, you know, securing brand deals or you pivot into another business model or another business venture, a lot of this mindset is going to translate into other industries as well. And so with that said, I hope that was helpful. So if you are an influencer and creator and you want to earn more than $1,000 to $3,000 per brand deal, but you don't really know how to get there, you feel like you're stuck at that and you can't break that ceiling or you're uncomfortable breaking that ceiling by yourself or even advocate for yourself when you're negotiating, you're afraid to do it. Um, you don't know how much you could be leaving on the table because you don't know what you should be charging or how much you could be charging or how much you could be earning from brand deals, whether or not you're a micro influencer or a big creator, you don't understand the why behind every dollar that you charge and you want to be able to so that you can advocate for yourself and that you can tell brands, Hey, like, this doesn't work for me. You're able to evaluate every single brand deal that comes through the door for you. And you're able to create those boundaries of like, I don't want to lowball myself or devalue myself by accepting something that I know is worth three times that or five times that. And you want to learn how to communicate those increased rates to a brand so that, you know, when they're hesitant to offer you more money, they're able to understand where you're coming from and they understand where that money goes to. And you need help hitting those big goals that you've set for yourself in the beginning of the year. And especially now that the holidays are around the corner, brands are hiring left and right for Q4, for holiday partnerships, for Black Friday. And you want to be in the forefront of that and you want to be the creator that brands hire over and over again. So if that's you and you need support in being able to scale your brand deal income up to, you know, five figure months and more, feel free to send me a DM on my Instagram or fill out an application that's linked in this episode and I'll see you again in the next one.